In example 4, we will have a look at a bit more mathematical task. Uh, and the task here is that uh, we are supposed to compute Fibonacci numbers. So Fibonacci numbers are such that the first two uh, are equal to 1, and then each next number is created using the previous two by adding them up. So the general formula here is this one, and that basically means that third number will be the sum of second, because if n is 3, then this is 2, and plus first number. So that's how it goes. Uh, so since each next number depends on the previous one, and we know that there is a number of steps uh, we should do, we know that we should use actually loop, and since the number of steps is fixed, we know that we need 10 numbers, then that means we can comfortably uh, use loop 4. So let's do it. Uh, okay. We know that the first two numbers are 1 and 1, so those uh, should actually be defined before the loop, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to create the next number. So the first number is not created using any formula, it's just given a value. So I will... and since I want to create uh, the 10 numbers and I want to have all of them in a vector at the end of my loop. So that's why I will create a vector and I will say, I'll call it f for Fibonacci and I will say that the first number in that vector is 1 and then the second number in this vector is also 1. So these are the first two uh, that are given uh, values without any calculation. And now we know that if we were to do it kind of manually, without using loop, so that would mean, I would say that the third one, now, is the sum of second plus first. And then the fourth one would be the third plus second, and so on. And then the tenth one, for instance, so we would have some uh, in between, and the tenth would mean that it's the ninth plus the eighth. But of course, now if the task said create a thousand Fibonacci numbers, we wouldn't want it to do it manually, even less than one thousand. Uh, so it is always good to write a code in such a way that it can work for any any desired number. That's why loop can do it for us, because loop is meant to repeat steps. So, that means that these steps in here we have to replace by a loop. I will comment these lines. And now, since I said the number of steps is known, we know that we should get all together 10 numbers. So I can ha have index change, I can use loop 4. And now, all together I need 10 numbers. But remember, the first two are given already, which means that my indexing doesn't have to start from 1. It can actually start from the first number which needs to be calculated, which is actually in position 3. So I will tell MATLAB that uh, my index should be changing from, from 3 and to go until 10, because this is the number I want. So this is the amount of the total amount of numbers I want to have created. And then all I need to do is type in this formula, but now in the language of our index. So I would not be using explicit values in, in my formula anymore. Let me let me take this one and then we see how to change it to index. So now if if we were doing the third number, so when I start from three. It means that here, exactly, I would have to put i, because it's that i, it's that third number I'm making. 
and it is it is uh, calculated using the previous one, so the one prior to i and the one two steps before i, which means that the prior one to i is in location i minus one because it's one place to the left, and then the one yet once one location mm -hmm. before is i minus two. So this should do the job. Let's put the semicolon and the loop and just run it. So now I can ask what is f and you can see f has 10 values just for checking. You can see 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 2 plus 2 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, 8 plus 13 is 21, 13, 21 is 34 and 21 plus 34 is 55. So it is all calculated correct. Uh, what could have been done in the code, maybe differently, or how can we complement the court, uh, code? Well, one good practice is that uh, anything that could be changed, uh, so for instance, if you decide to calculate 100 numbers, 205, or whichever amount, this is the uh, number we point here in the indexing. So good practice is to give it a name as a variable and then define it at the beginning of your code. So I would do it like this, uh, 10. Uh, the reason being that, of course, this is a small code and it's easy to scroll and see immediate, immediately where you would have to change 10 to a different number if you wanted. But if your code grows, uh, which will be the case when you start to work on bigger projects, it means that your code will have hundreds of thousands of lines. So scrolling through and trying to find where was that, uh, where, where was that particular number, which in this case would be 10, that I'm supposed to change in my code. So it's best to define any variables that are known from the beginning variables parameters. Define them right away at the beginning of your code and then refer to that variable name. Another thing here is that uh, we, since the task says to create specific amount of Fibonacci numbers, we, we already know from the start how many they will be. And that means that we could have uh, prepared MATLAB for this, that we are actually creating this and this many numbers. So I could have said here uh, that I create F, which is maybe filled with zeros, for instance. And it should have uh, as many places, as many numbers I'm planning to create, which in this case is n. So once again, I'm you see now I'm not using 10 anymore. I'm actually pointing n in case I want to change that value. Now you could ask, is it really necessary? Uh, of course, when I run it, uh, we will get the result as well. And it is not necessary, but it is also a good practice. We will talk about it in lecture 5 when we talk about speed and style in coding. But basically, this code works slightly faster than the previous one because MATLAB knows in advance what is the size of our f uh, vector. So for now, you can just know it's, it's better to do it this way when you know how big your result matrix will be. But we wouldn't be able to do it if, for instance, we were having a task where you use a while loop because you don't know the number of steps to be performed. So if for some reason we didn't know how many numbers we want, for instance, if the task says uh, create all the, all the Fibonacci numbers until you exceed or until the number that exceeds 1 million, then I wouldn't know how, which one it is that exceeds million. So then we would need to use a for loop, uh, sorry, while loop. But in this case, we know a fixed number, create 10 numbers or 100 numbers, then we already know our resulting uh, f will be of that size. And then a yet alternative way to do so, to make this would have been like that, that we would have I'll call it now f1. So once again, we define two numbers. Sorry, f1, 
Uh, the second element will be one also. And then we just write the loop slightly differently, the way we store uh, we store things. So you could you could do it so that which would be a bit silly, but just to remind you that there is that technique uh, that our f1 would become what it has contained already and then uh, that new number which would be f1 i minus 1 plus f1 i minus 2. So in this way we are taking uh, that f1 mm -hmm. array as it is and then using space or a comma, I could have used a comma here as well or comma space, it just means into my row add now another element which is calculated like that. But this is much less uh, transparent, much less neat, this, this piece of code than the one we actually had in the loop written like this. But they, they both would create the same result. It's just that this one again would also work a bit longer. And in here you see now, I didn't put the semicolon, so you see the process as the numbers are being created. So always one more. So the next version of our F1 is what it used to be and that new number which is being calculated on the spot.